Welcome everyone to another fun image processing live stream here straight from work. Some breaking news. JPEG XL, I made a previous live stream some months ago regarding the AV uh, IF or something and uh, AV1 based, I think, and high image, uh, high efficiency image coding, hike as used as uh, in Apple's iPhone and stuff. And JPEG XL, another alternative to that and also a little bit the thing between some commercial vendors like Apple just hacking something together um, or Google and stuff and other standard committee. Initially I dismissed this a little bit so what this is is previously that JPEG of course what everyone is using uh, every day a little bit in the meantime obviously old-fashioned macro block um, encoding scheme. Then we had JPEG 2000 also mentioned in the previous video 20 years old already in 2000 obviously that was based on wavelet compression not as popular um, maybe due to patent reasons or other computational requirements jpeg xl initially i dismissed this a little bit um, favoring this afif stuff from netflix and google or whoever um, but people friends and stuff in the PDF community, uh, Adobe and, and similar, um, pointed me to that, um, that this might potentially be worse looking or a better alternative. So here we are, straight from my work desk, the usual PDF working group research stuff and uh, reading papers, trying stuff out and what is different. So JPEG, obviously in the meantime, more than 20 years old, extremely old fashioned, certainly everyone knows, not as efficient as 20 years of compressing research. And what is different here in this is that this is employing, um, as better summarized here in this nice blog post, psycho-visual modeling similar to MP3 or Gwobis and similar audio compression schemes. So taking human uh, um, brain-like uh, recognition effects into account um, to what is visible and not what to compress, uh, like background stuff and uh, other uh, more fine details, what to preserve. And initially I thought, um, so also they have the goal of no royalties, that would be amazing because uh, certainly if it is encumbered by patent, uh, patent trolls, it's certainly not as amazing, like um, this high efficiency image file format container, like even bloody freaking container, uh, Nokia claims patents and Otherwise, uh, obviously, AV1 um, or this hive stuff of major uh, patent alliance stuff. So, allegedly, potentially, maybe, hopefully, royalty free. And the compression um, is quite universal and backward compatible. So, of course, if you use a backward compatibility, you gain nothing in terms of compression. They have this um, someone, uh, probably, I guess, close to the research and standardization process here has a nice blog post that we are reusing here and so if you use backward compatibility obviously you get the same quality same transfer size however you can apparently mix this and apparently as far as I understood this so far need to do more research uh, you could mix this that you allocate like some base image to base jpeg um, decoding so that legacy clients like your sg octane or PlayStation 3 can still decode something or Windows uh, XP or something. And if you have a modern web browser or client, uh, use residual encoding to um, in vastly in increase the visual um, appearance. Plus, um, also over the other image formats, it's not block based, so they had this somewhere like, uh, no, I think it was probably here. We go to the imaging examples here, but the other hike and AVIF are block-based uh, due to the nature of the video codec inheritance there from X265 or what this is and AV1. Um, so as visualized here, they are block boundaries. They are not as eight by eight macro block things of good old fashioned JPEG, but still there. And in general, maybe not the most ideal to um, always tile images in whatever video coding block that might be. So unlike those, um, it doesn't need to have Z tiles. And additionally, it supports progressive decoding so that 
for responsive web applications, you can you stream the data and the client, similar to progressive JPEG and PNG, start displaying the image, um, especially on a analog modem line, I heard somewhere and some landlines or otherwise broken DOCSIS, Vodafone, certainly garbage. DOCSIS Cox cable here in the center of Berlin, which again doesn't work for live streaming. So streaming over LTE where probably you also want to have some progressive coding potentially. So a lot of benefits, also higher fidelity. Some of the other formats are limited to 8-bit or so and um, JPEG XL supports higher bit devs and um, also I supports uh, because JPEG only supports this one encoding mode obviously, well, obviously not for vintage legacy reasons and they also want to cover PNG so although I guess due to the nature of the relatively complex modern standard uh, which you obviously can um, buy there at the ISO stuff but um, for JPEG and JPEG and stuff you know. anyway um, certainly relatively complex but with this complexity covering PNG or ping at a time so that you can here with this original image um, certainly this is the worst case scenario obviously if you want to showcase your imaging format and you obviously come up with worst case scenarios so this is of course worst case for JPEG if you take a look here and um, this high fidelity color gradient and um, computer generated um, solid line graphic stuff of course for PNG quite good um, this is prediction filter as used in PNG and then this usual deflate or flate comp compression um, where do they have this okay 2.6 actually relatively large so 2.6 apparently original JPEG um, and so this compresses down uh, quite well here with this JPEG XL default settings 43 um, they say indistinguishable from the original that is certainly a pretty good achievement especially if you consider um, both WebP um, relatively good again relatively new but of course the worst case scenario for JPEG is a good old-fashioned uh, macro block encoding stuff some strong color bending halos around the text um, small text hard to read obviously well, the usual JPEG compression artifact so all in all looking quite good quite some features better than expected initially I dismissed this a little bit as like yeah legacy JPEGs and like yeah whatever we need some modern stuff but this also means yeah read read all the stuff not like yeah the name already sounds old-fashioned they of course you have some promotion papers of use case and uh, requirements here by the working group uh, ISO ITC uh, steering Com committee 29 working group one here and um, there you can basically read even more details of what I just summarized um, their goal scope significant compression efficiency um, 60 percent better over JPEG which obviously yeah 30 probably 30 years old by now so it's not that much magic but um, in retrospect um, as far as I've seen this here pretty nice um, development over other high efficiency codecs here of WebP um, at least in this examples and due to the nature of supporting 24-bit uh, integer, 32-bit float, um, the megapixels here. So what other, yeah, obviously, I mean, JPEG, we know that. Um, also, did you know that 64, um, 64K, aka 16-bit integers, 8-bit, uh, three channels or four channels, usually not even alpha blending, or alpha channel. PNG, of course, as I said, um, this is not doing any, this is always lossless, um, flayed 16-bit max of RGBA, um, obviously what you need for the transparency goodness. Um, WebP apparently even, what is it, apparently even, well, although usually you don't have that large images. So I'm surprised that this uh, high efficiency codex and AVIF has so small limits. Um, that is a little bit uh, can handle larger images but not directly in a single code stream you know, must decompose the image into a grid of the independent encoding tiles and it's like yeah um, so yeah as seen a second ago 16-bit 12-bit also um, 
I would say 16-bit probably usually enough, but 12-bit obviously could potentially sometimes um, be a little bit limiting. So 24-bit uh, integer and 32-bit float up to 4,100 channels. What the heck? Where anyway? Pro probably you can do this. Not that you would normally need that. Um, probably four or five, unless you have some uh, print color stuff of directly compressing um, print ink with special um, key color over print whatever stuff. Anyway, that's it for the summary. Looks pretty good. Um, I will obviously next uh, take here this example code, which uh, obviously um, is as nice as libjpg, some open source example reference implementation. Need to package that now. We will probably do this uh, either now or in some minutes on the more live channel there. Um, I hope you learned something from the summary and that even in this imaging stuff, even with WebP, of course, this, the difference is this is real research and not like the other hike and AVIF of big companies of Apple just doing what they want, Apple, Google, Netflix, of like, yeah, let's yeah, just YOLO some video codec and that's good enough. Um, so this looks indeed um, pretty good, much much more impressive than I expected. And um, we'll certainly see how this works out in our PDF working group of standardizing PDF, whatever next revision might be for supporting higher uh, image compression stuff. Anyway, if you want to see this live Linux stuff, there is this more live channel. Um, stay healthy and I hope to see you 